Hello, my beautiful. Yellow bone, red bone, butter pecan, caramel, butterscotch, toffee, mocha, chocolate, cocoa, exoticals. Welcome to the Pretty Girl Club. Welcome to the Exoticals United Community. If you are new here, welcome. Here in the Exoticals United Community, we support men and women from the following people groups multiracials, biracials, multi generationally mixed and light-skinned golden people. So today I want to talk about the real reason why light-skinned monoracials are hated so much. When I use the term light-skinned monoracial, I'm referring to those who have a skin tone that is caramel and above and who also have more than 75% African in their DNA. So even though they may have admixture, their admixture could be very low, below 25%, to the point where that person still considers themselves to be only black. And I've noticed there are a few reasons why light-skinned monoracial people are some of the most hated by unambiguous dark-skinned black women. Number one, there's nothing unambiguous women have that you don't have. A lot of times when unambiguous women are making fun of mixed race women or they're defending themselves, they'll call people who are mixed race a woman of no color, or they will say that we are part Neanderthal or part Ling Ling, and they start making fun of whatever our non-black side is. But if you're a monoracial black woman with a very low admixture and you just happen to be of a lighter complexion, unambiguous women have nothing to make fun of. You share the same facial features as them, so they make fun of your facial features and they'll be making fun of their own. You have the same hair texture as them, so if they make fun of your hair, they're making fun of their own. You know how unambiguous women like to brag about how their melanin is popping? Well, if you're a light-skinned monoracial, your melanin is popping too because you have melanin and you're not white passing. Unambiguous women also like to brag about how black women have the best body types in the world. Well, if you're unambiguous and you happen to be of a light skin tone, you have both the best body type in the world and you have what they call the quote unquote preference look. I personally don't believe that any phenotype is better than another, but in the black community, unambiguous women are constantly obsessing and talking about how lighter skinned women are the more preferred ones. So. You have the melanin, you have the body type, you also have the, the preferred phenotype since you often pass as being mixed race. No one can deny you of your blackness because you share the same culture, you have parents and grandparents who are unambiguous, and you just happen to be the exception to the rule to the point where your small amount of admixture just happened to show up in your phenotype. Does this mean you should stop identifying as black? No, this just means you should embrace your phenotype and love every part of yourself even your small amount of admixture. Everyone has the right to love how they look, even if they don't look monoracial. When it comes to mixed people, people are more likely to take our blackness away from us. But when you are someone like Tamar Braxton, no one can really take away your blackness because you have plenty of unambiguous immediate family members to prove your black heritage. When I use the term light-skinned, I differentiate that from being multi-generationally mixed, and here's why. On this channel, I still consider multi-generationally mixed people to be around the 25% mark or more, and that's because I just don't want people to be confused about what groups I'm talking about on this YouTube channel. I am not an activist. These are not real-life racial categories. This is not a category in the U.S. Census. Exotical is not a racial terminology. Exotical is not an actual race. It's just a slang term. These are not real-life rules that you have to follow outside of YouTube. And no, I don't think anyone in real life will ever make you take a DNA test to prove who you are. But for the sake of this conversation, because I talk about controversial subjects on this channel, I'm using that marker, the 25% 20, the marker. I'm using that on this channel, and I'm not changing it. If you don't like it, that's fine. This channel may not be for you. But when I use the term light skin black on this channel, I'm really just referring to those with less than 25% admixture who happen to be light skinned, AKA light brown and above. I'm talking to my 80, 20 girls, my 90, 10 mixes, or my girls who are literally just the exception to the rule. These are people where all of your family came out dark skinned and unambiguous, and you just happen to be the light one. So with that little bit of admixture you had, your non-black ancestors basically said, F it, we're reincarnating through this light skin chick right here, and our genes are just gonna come through. When it comes to skin tone, I believe that skin tone is a spectrum, and there are two sides of the spectrum. There's the light skin side of the spectrum and the dark skin side of the spectrum. The reason I don't use the term brown skinned is because I noticed that a lot of a lot of people like to use that as a gaslighting term so they don't have to talk about colorism. And also I've noticed that people try to use the term light brown as if that's not light skin. 
But think about it this way. If someone has a dark brown skin tone, are they dark skinned? So then why is it that if someone has a light brown skin tone, suddenly they're not light skinned? No, let's keep the same energy everywhere. If someone with a dark brown skin tone is dark skinned, then someone with a light brown skin tone is light skinned. But the reason I don't use the term brown skinned is because technically all people of color who are not white passing are brown. So I feel like brown skinned is just too vague of a term for me to use on this channel. Generally speaking, I've only heard people use the term brown skin as a nickname to describe themselves. Like, oh, I'm brown skinned. But I've never seen African American historical records where they talk about light people and brown skinned people. No, they talk about lighter or fairer skinned black people and darker skinned black people. In my personal experience and observation, usually when someone refers to another person as brown skinned, they're really talking about a dark skinned person. They're trying to say that they're not light skinned, AKA they're dark skinned. They're just not the darkest person in the room. People use the term brown skin to describe those of a darker complexion who aren't super dark chocolate. I think of women like Jennifer Hudson, Brandy, and Gabrielle Union. All of those women are on the darker skin spectrum in my opinion. I feel like the term brown can be used interchangeably with being light skinned or dark skinned, which is what makes it confusing. And that's why I don't use it. Based on my studies of sociology and psychology, I've noticed these general patterns in the African American community. If you've suffered from colorism, you're dark skinned. If you've always been called dark skinned, you're dark skinned. If you've never been called light, light brown, or caramel, you're dark skinned. Sure, you may not be the darkest of the dark skins, but you're still on the darker skinned spectrum in my opinion. By the way, all skin tones are beautiful, so there's nothing wrong with that. I also don't mind when other people call themselves brown because it's their body and they have the right to use whatever terms of endearment or nicknames they choose to use. I've called myself brown, I've seen Asians call themselves brown as well as Latin Americans, so I understand that it's just a nickname and a term of endearment. I just think that it's too vague of a term to use when we talk about something as controversial as colorism. Everyone knows that quote unquote brown skins are left out of the colorism conversation, so I've noticed a sociological pattern in the black community where if you talk about a lighter skinned woman of color, people will try to be like, shut up, she's brown. You can't talk about this. You, you can't talk about colorism now because she's brown. But at the end of the day, we all know that skin tone is subjective. If you look up the term light skinned in the dictionary, it really just means a non-white person who has pale or relatively pale skin. The word relative means in relation to something else or having relatively light skin means you're relatively light in comparison to the average person of your race. But I've noticed in the unambiguous black community, many people will try to use the term brown skin as a humbling tactic by comparing the person to a white person. But that's disingenuous because you know that Chloe and Hallie are not white women, for example. So why is it that when we're talking about race, they're black, but suddenly when we talk about color, you want to compare light skins to white people as the standard and say, oh, well, they're brown. First of all, let's look at Chloe's skin with no makeup on in comparison to an actual white woman, and let's compare the two colors. Chloe is barely darker than plenty of non-black and white women, so that's number one. But the more important question is, why is it that when we're talking about blackness, you want to center black people into the conversation, yet when we're talking about light-skinned black people, suddenly you center white people as the skin tone standard and then say, oh, well, they're brown. The reason you're doing that is because you just don't want to talk about the light-skinned experience. You just don't want to acknowledge that light-skinned people exist and that they have their own independent experiences that are different than your own, and you just don't want to lose control of the narrative when it comes to the colorism argument. You don't want lighter skinned people to share their side of the story or their side of how they've been treated by unambiguous black women. I've also noticed another hypocrisy when it comes to the whole light skin thing. You guys will call people like Chris Brown light skin, you'll call T.I. light skin, you'll call Boris Kojo and Michael Ely and Will Smith light skin. I've even seen some people calling Michael B. Jordan and The Game and August Alsina light skin. But then suddenly, Chloe and Hallie aren't light-skinned? Have you ever noticed that whenever it's a woman, she has to be like five or six shades lighter to even be considered light-skinned? So Lori Harvey is not light-skinned, Beyonce is not light-skinned, Chloe and Hallie aren't light-skinned, Blue Ivy is not light-skinned, but all of these men who are the same shade as those women, if not multiple shades darker, are light-skinned. 
If you look at Chloe's makeup tutorial she did with Vogue, she literally calls herself light and yellow in front of millions of people. People don't go in front of millions of people calling themselves light unless they've already had the experiences to back up what they're saying. Also, the black community is hypocritical because let's say someone who's mostly European and has a little bit of admixture calls themselves light-skinned or yellow, suddenly it's you're not light-skinned because you're not even black. The term light skin is reserved only for people with two black parents. You can't be light-skinned if you're biracial or mixed race. But then you have Chloe and Hallie right here who have two black parents and a light skin tone and suddenly they're not light-skinned either. Stop trying to pretend that light-skinned black people can't exist or have their own experiences or that they don't have a place to speak. And then on top of that, they'll turn around and get mad at Hallie Bailey for playing that role in The Color Purple, saying that she took that acting role from a dark-skinned, unambiguous woman. So which one is it? Do light-skinned people exist or not? Do light-skinned, black, monoracial women exist or do they not exist? Why is it that dark brown people are dark-skinned but light brown people are not light-skinned? A lot of black women will admit when a man is light-skinned, but they won't admit when a woman is light-skinned. Or they'll make the standard for women way lighter than what the light-skinned standard is for men. And also, have you ever noticed that it's always unambiguous dark-skinned black people who are arguing over who's light-skinned and who isn't? It's, I've never seen anyone who is actually light-skinned or actually mixed-race arguing over who's light-skinned and who's not. This is a typical case of trying to blackify or darkening someone else because you're jealous and because at the end of the day you believe that calling a woman light-skinned is a compliment and it's going to make her think she's better than you. Just admit that that's what it is. You think that light skin makes someone think that they're better than you and you stereotype light-skinned people as thinking they're better than you. Therefore, you don't want to call someone light-skinned because you don't want that girl to think she's better than you or to think she's prettier than you or to think that she's more desirable than you. Because deep down inside, you believe that she's more desirable than you, or that she's more pretty than you, or that she has more opportunities than you because of her light skin. And so in order to humble her and put her on your level, you wanna say, well, she's not light. As if society as a whole can't see her skin color is clearly a yellowish beige tan color. Unambiguous women need to admit that you think light skin equals compliment, and brown to dark skin equals average at best. That's why you don't want to call women light-skinned. It's because you view those women as being in some sort of competition and you already think that they're ahead of you because they're light-skinned, but by admitting that they're light-skinned, you believe that you are giving them even more beauty points over you. And you know that you can't call her dark skin because that's absolutely delusional. So instead, you try to give her a vague term like brown. No, we're all brown. Beige is a shade of brown. Tan is a shade of brown. If you look up graphic design color theory articles about the color beige, it even says on graphic design websites that beige is sometimes classified as white in color theory. Yet we have people in the black community calling beige people unambiguous or dark skin or brown when there are literal white people with the same skin tone as them. There are literal tan skinned Italians with beige or tan skin tones. So to pretend that a person with a racially ambiguous skin tone has the same colorism experience as a dark-skinned, unambiguous woman is disingenuous. When I make these videos, it's not so I can pedestalize light skin, it's so I can get you to see the delusion in the black female community. People who are in the skin tone range of Ariana Grande are not going to have the same experience as people who look like Lapita Nyong'o or Gabrielle Union. No, they're not. And no, all of these women are not the same skin tone. Some of these women are darker skinned and other women are lighter skinned. Some of them are dark brown, which equals dark skin. And some of them are light brown, which equals light skin. You can't say that dark brown skin means you're dark skinned and then light brown skin means, oh, you're nothing, that you're not light skinned. No, keep the same energy all around. There are so many holes in your talking points. And this is why we see black women get so shocked and say it's colorism that people supported Chloe and Halle over Ari Lennox or Kiki Palmer's music. Oh, but I thought that just a minute ago, all of these women were just brown, right? They're all the same color, right? They all look the same, right? They're all brown skinned black women. And this is how black women set themselves up for disappointment because they'll see a group like Destiny's Child and they'll say, oh, Beyonce is a regular black girl like anyone else. So then they will delusionally rally behind her 
or rally behind women like Chloe and Halle, or women like Nicki Minaj and Cardi B lying to themselves and saying that Cardi B looks like them. Hey, she wears a 1B synthetic straight wig and so do I, so we look alike. And then when she blows up and becomes a millionaire, suddenly it's unambiguous women are being erased and they're replacing us and benefiting from colorism. No, sis, you have internalized colorism because you're so delusional that you can't see yourself for who you truly are, which is more of the Kelly Rowland or the Whoopi Goldberg or the Viola Davis. That's who you look like and that's okay. Chloe and Halle are not dark skinned and they can't even tan into being dark-skinned or chocolate-colored of any kind. Therefore, they're still light-skinned. They may not be the lightest of the light skins, but who is? And why is it that dark-skinned tones get to have an entire color spectrum of chocolate, cocoa, coffee-colored, mahogany, ebony, and then suddenly when you're light-skinned, there's only one color and it's white passing? So if you're darker than Mariah Carey, you don't have a skin tone category. No, light-skinned people exist. Light-skinned tones exist. Light brown is light skinned, just like how dark brown is dark skinned. There will always be someone darker than you. There will always be someone lighter than you. People don't want to admit that they also take your hair texture and your facial features into consideration when they are deciding your skin tone. If Chloe and Halle had type two or type one or type three blonde wavy hair, their skin tones wouldn't even be a question. We wouldn't even be talking about it. Just because Chloe and Halle don't fit the Eurocentric stereotype of what a light-skinned person should look like doesn't mean that they're not light-skinned. Not all light-skinned people have blue eyes or type 3 hair. There are light-skinned people with locks. There are light-skinned women with wide, flat noses and full lips like Ella Mai and Chloe. And have you ever noticed that whenever a light-skinned woman has non-white or African features, people will call her ugly? Like Kiki Wyatt, Hazel E., Ella Mai, Tiny, or Chloe? People love calling lighter skinned women with non-white features ugly or saying, oh, well, you guys get outranked by all of these other women. I've seen black women empowerment creators literally try to rank women on a beauty scale and they will purposely try to rank the whiter passing women as higher and more beautiful as a tactic of humbling the more black looking light skinned women. Now, if that's not colorism, texturism, featureism, and anti-blackness, I don't know what is. If I were to ever take a picture of an unambiguous dark-skinned black woman and compare her to women lighter than her or women who were mixed race or more white looking, I would be called all kinds of racists. So it's okay for you to do it to light-skinned women, but it's not okay for you to do the same behaviors to dark-skinned women. Black women are calling women like Chloe or women like Ella Mai, they're calling them ugly because in that unambiguous monoracial woman's mind, she's not fitting the light skin stereotype that she's supposed to fit. Blue Ivy doesn't fit the light skin stereotype that she's supposed to fit. She doesn't have a thin, tiny, pointy, white looking nose or blue eyes or silky hair. Therefore, she must be ugly. Therefore, her hair is ugly. The main people that were talking crap about Blue Ivy's hair were black women, dark skinned black women with 4C hair. Yet if I were to give those same criticisms to someone like Whoopi Goldberg and say that her wide flat nose and hair texture makes her ugly, I would be called racist. Now let's get back to the actual dictionary definition of the term light skinned. It just means relatively light. Look in the dictionary folks. Reading is fundamental. Let's educate ourselves. The definition doesn't say light compared to white people. It doesn't say white passing. It doesn't say as light as an unambiguous person thinks you are. And it certainly doesn't say lighter than a paper bag. It just means relatively light, which means in comparison to the average people within your race or within your racial group, you'd be considered light. There is no way that you can convince me that the average African-American woman looks like Chloe and Halle and has the same skin tone as Chloe and Halle. That is disingenuous. Chloe and Halle's phenotype stands out. That's a part of what made them famous. So yes, light brown skin is still light skinned because beige is a shade of light brown, according to the dictionary. Tan is a shade of light brown, according to the dictionary. So yes, there are white people who are technically light brown. So you can't tell me that someone is the same shade or just a couple shades off from a white person and that they are suddenly uh, dark skinned. Black women have no problem seeing when a man is light skinned. In fact, they will fangirl over him. 
they will call him a colorist for not wanting to date her. But when it comes to a light-skinned black woman, that's their biggest competition, of course. So they can't admit that her skin tone is light because that would give her an advantage when it comes to black men. But guess what? Black men are not blind and society as a whole is not blind. Just because some random black person on the internet says, she's not light-skinned, that doesn't mean that society doesn't see her as light-skinned. Society as a whole, and black men as a whole, still see Chloe and Halle as light-skinned. They are still operating in this world as lighter-skinned people. So you can say on your YouTube channels all you want, oh, well, they're not light, oh, well, they're brown, okay, we're all brown, and they have type four hair, but that's not gonna end colorism, sis. It's just going to soothe your internalized denial about the fact that you don't want to see yourself for what you really look like. So you tether yourself onto women like Beyonce or Chloe and Halle, and you pretend like you look like them because that's what makes you feel more beautiful. You feel more beautiful pretending that you look like Chloe and Halle rather than actually looking like Viola Davis. And nothing is going to change in the media or in society as long as black people stay delusional about things like skin tone, hair texture, and mixed race people. So we as MLS people, mixed or light skinned people, will forever be pushed to the forefront and used to represent blackness, such as Rosa Parks, Kamala Harris, Barack Obama, etc. We will forever be pushed to the forefront, Beyonce, Rihanna, because you put us here. Black women put Chloe and Halle in the position that they're in. Unambiguous people pushed us, MLS people, to the forefront. They popularized our phenotypes because they lied to themselves saying that they look like us. So if you want to keep lying to yourself saying that, hey, she looks just like me or, oh, you know what? She's not that far off from me. Okay, that's fine. But then don't get mad when we quote unquote replace you later on. Don't get mad when Hallie is representing you in the color purple. Don't get mad when Hallie, who is light skinned, is representing you in the Little Mermaid. And it's funny because they don't care about tethering their phenotypes to women like Kelly Rowland. They don't care about tethering their looks to women like Viola Davis. They, they don't try to argue back and forth about how much they look like Whoopi Goldberg. They don't care about Whoopi Goldberg's phenotype. They won't fight you tooth and nail saying, oh no, I look just like Whoopi Goldberg. She looks just like any black woman that you would see walking down the street. No. They'd rather tether themselves to Beyonce, the Beyonce bandwagon. And then they'll get mad when women who look like Beyonce in real life have high confidence and self-esteem. They'll tether themselves to women like Rihanna and make her a billionaire. And then get mad when Rihanna turns around and has a baby with a quote unquote colorist. Or they get mad when a woman who looks like Rihanna in real life actually has confidence. It's the mental gymnastics for me. It's the denial for me. If you want to popularize your phenotype, you have to support people with your actual phenotype. No, not the one you try to pretend to be. No, not women with my phenotype. Women with yours. Your hair texture, your skin tone, your nose, your lips, everything. This video is not supposed to be a put down towards towards blackness at all because I love my blackness, I embrace it. But I don't, but don't get mad when I embrace my version of blackness, which is the mixed race blackness, the lighter skinned people, the Beyonce's, the Aaliyah's. And don't get mad when I embrace my lighter skin tone that you helped popularize. Has anyone noticed that when you're a lighter skinned woman, you're never allowed to talk about colorism unless you're agreeing with a dark skinned black woman, of course. And you're also never allowed to say what your own skin tone is. Darker skinned black women can call themselves terms of endearment with their dark skin tones, such as chocolate queen or melanated, my melanin's poppin', you know, cocoa, coffee colored, but you can't call yourself butterscotch, butter pecan, red bone, yellow bone, or toffee because that's colorist. But Chloe doesn't give an F in her Vogue makeup video because guess what? Chloe's not representing dark skinned women. She didn't call herself brown skin. She said in the Vogue video, she's light and yellow. She called herself that. That's the phenotype she is representing. That's the phenotype she is popularizing. So yes, her light skinned Afrocentric phenotype, that is what she's representing. She doesn't care if you guys call her and her sister brown. She's gonna keep calling herself light and yellow. And so are other women such as light-skinned Keisha. So are other women such as Lotto, 
they're still moving through this world and navigating through society and through Hollywood as lighter skinned women. And when it comes to Chloe and Halle, they're navigating through this world as light skinned black identifying women. So now what? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.